So let's take a look at the log4j vulnerability that just came out a couple of days ago. Now this has been a really big deal because the log4j library is one of the most common logging libraries in Java. So this affects potentially millions of Java applications. And in order to show how the vulnerability works, I've written a really simple application that is going to log some user input. Now, uh, in order to exploit the vulnerability, we have to be able to put user input into the logger. So in my example application, it's just going to log an error that says hello username. And the username is going to be the command line parameter. So we can do this. That's going to say hello malware tech. Now the problem arises with how the logging library handles these things, which I'm actually not sure what they're called in Java. It's a bit like format strings in C or F strings in Python. And a lot of different languages have these. And basically the idea is you can input a variable into a string and the variable will be replaced with the actual value of that variable. So if we do something like this, that variable is actually going to get replaced with the Java version. So it's actually going to output hello Java version 180 rather than outputting this uh, actual string. So you can already kind of see where this is going. It's basically evaluating arbitrary variables which the user can supply. Now, this is just getting stored to the logs, so that's potentially not too bad. But things get really bad when you encounter something called JNDI. Now, JNDI is a Java interface that allows you to basically fetch remote objects from a server and load them. So that's uh, completely safe because in normal code, you would be specifying which server to load the objects from. So you could say, go and get this object from my server and load it. But the problem is here is the user can actually input their own JNDI lookups. So they could actually do something like this. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell the app to do a JNDI lookup for a server which we control. In this case, hacks.local is our LDAP server. So that's going to tell the application, go to an LDAP server that the attacker controls and fetch an object of their choosing and then load it. So this is basically just going to allow them to load whatever they want on to, into your app. So for example here, what I'm going to do is tell it to go to my LDAP server and download an object that is going to run this base64 command. And this is base64 for calc.exe. So it's basically going to run the command calc.exe on the system. As you can see, we've popped calc and that can be done completely remotely. And obviously they can do way more malicious things than run calculator. They could load malware onto the system. They could exfiltrate passwords. They can do basically whatever. So it is a really bad vulnerability. And all the user has to do is get an entry into logs. And applications typically do a lot of logging. Um, for instance, if it was a HTTP application, they might want to log user agents. They might want to log invalid requests or malformed HTTP headers. So by simply just spamming an invalid HTTP header with this string, that would cause the server to run our arbitrary code. So this is a very, very versatile vulnerability and it affects a lot of applications.